Thank you. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody, on behalf of Consignance, and thank you for the opportunity to present. I'm Jill Rasmussen, a medical advisor for Consignance, and I'd like to speak to you about our compound CSTI 500, a promising triple reuptake inhibitor for the management of symptoms of Prader Willi syndrome. So, on this slide, you'll see that. The key issues associated with prader willi syndrome often involve three monoamines, serotonin, norepinephrine, and dopamine. These are monoamines or neurotransmitters that are involved in regulating vital central nervous system functions that include mood, behaviors, and, and feeding. prader willi syndrome is associated with decreased levels of these monoamines, and this leads to impaired neurotransmission and has, a, as a consequence, the behavioral and physiological abnormalities that are characteristic of the syndrome. CSTI 500 is a triple reuptake inhibitor, so it improves the levels of these three monoamines, and it acts to normalize the levels with the aim of restoring brain functions and alleviation of the symptoms. In 2014, there was a survey carried out of patients and caregivers of people with prader willi syndrome. And this cartoon illustrates the symptoms that were very important or most important to have a, a treatment um, as uh, for patients and, and caregivers. And you'll see at the bottom that by the symptoms, there is a tick. And this shows the potential of a triple reuptake inhibitor such as CSTI 500. It may have the potential to treat the symptoms that have the tick by them. So you see this is a broad perspective of the issues that face patients and caregivers. So do we have evidence that a triple reuptake inhibitor may be effective in managing the symptoms of prader willi syndrome? So on the left of this screen, we will talk about a study that was conducted with a, a triple reuptake inhibitor, tezofensine or tezomet. And on the right of the screen, a, a similar evidence from um, a study with sertraline, a serotonin reuptake inhibitor. That's just one of the monoamines. So on the left, you'll see that tezomet was effective when you in managing the symptoms of hyperphagia. This was a small study. It was placebo controlled. And here you see the placebo in black and the tezofensine uh, in blue. And you see there is a significant difference here in decreasing the hyperphagia. One of the issues, however, was the fact that treatment with tezofensine at the doses that were effective was associated with significant psychiatric events. On the right-hand side with sertraline, this compound is also widely used to treat other psychiatric conditions such as anxiety and depression but has been shown to be effective in managing the temper tantrums and behavioral symptoms um, of prader willi syndrome. And this was a, a study conducted over six months. And you see at baseline, the symptoms were in the blue bars. And after six months of treatment, the a, a number of the symptoms decreased, particularly the temper outbursts, which is the main outcome of this study, um, over six months with the effect beginning to be seen quite soon after the first and second months. So what about CSTI 500? What did we learn from this evidence? Well, we learned from tezofensine, yes, that you can have efficacy, but we also learned that there was quite a narrow window in which you needed to affect the, receptor, the receptors and the monoamines. We learned that efficacy can be seen for dopamine at around 60% occupancy and for ser serotonin at around 70, 75% occupancy. The problem with tezofensine was that they had greater occupancy for the dopamine and that tipped the people over into, although seeing efficacy, unacceptable side effects. 
So what we are proposing for CSTI 500 is to have a tailored individualized dosing system so that we can target the occupancy of around 60%, that's in the blue bars here, for dopamine and around 70, 75% uh, for sertraline. And we envisage, of serotonin, I'm sorry, and we envisage that the dose that needs to be administered will, will be around these levels or will need to be modified for a person's weight. And that obviously varies quite a lot for people with Prader-Willi syndrome across the age ranges. The brain occupancy that can be achieved with CSDI 500 has been confirmed in uh, phase one PET studies. So where are we up to in our clinical development program? We have conducted three studies in phase one, two of which were in healthy volunteers, a single dose and a multiple dose study. And these showed that CSTI 500 was generally safe and tolerated, and that observations were consistent with the pharmacology. The half-life was about 50 hours, and it took about two hours to reach the maximum concentration. And there was a dose-dependent brain occupancy, the graphs that I showed you in the previous slide and that we hope to show in the next study in phase two, um, the uh, PK, the pharmacokinetic pharmacodynamic relationship to guide the dosing to achieve the target receptor occupancy of 70, 75% serotonin and around 60% for dopamine. We've also conducted a, a single dose study in patients with Prader-Willi syndrome that showed a similar profile that the drug was safe and, and well tolerated and that the pharmacokinetics was similar to that seen in the healthy volunteers. We are also testing a fingerprint uh, system for taking blood samples. This is the last slide. We are planning a phase two study in patients with Prader-Willi syndrome primarily in North America and hope to start the study in um, 2024. And the study will assess efficacy in hyperphagia and behaviors in addition to safety and tolerability using our individualized dosing to reach the planned dopamine and serotonin transporter occupancy levels. Thank you.